Hello everyone, Chaos here, and welcome to another old school RuneScape video. The only certain things in life are death, taxes, and making a Nightmare Zone video if you're an OSRS content creator. And after one year of making videos, I think it's my turn to have a go at one of old school's most popular activities. If today's video is helpful to you guys, so consider subscribing with notifications on, dropping a like, as well as joining our amazing Discord community so you never miss out on our daily live streams and weekly content. Now, you guys know I love giving you a few disclaimers at the beginning of each video, and today's disclaimer will pretty much contradict the entire point of this guide, but hear me out. If you plan on doing this, I recommend doing it for your imbues and nothing else. We will take a look at the most important items to imbue, but until then, trust me, doing this for experience is going to be a little counterproductive in the long run. Before we start this guide, this is what I mean by that. So, what I always tell people in my streams is that by training at the Nightmare Zone, you are effectively wasting time since you will level up your combat stats naturally just by training Slayer. If you want this 99 in your account, the chances are you will hit a few combat stats at 99 or even all of them, so by training combat outside of Slayer, specifically at the Nightmare Zone, you might not be using your time efficiently even if you feel like you will level up Slayer faster by having higher combat stats and hitting bigger numbers, which might not be the case. But again, I'm not your dad, I'm not gonna tell you how to live your life, and because of that we are still going to look at some efficient setups for this chill activity. With that out of the way, let's begin. First of all, for all you brand new players, what is the Nightmare Zone and how do you get there? This is a place where you can battle against quest bosses once you're done with their respective quests, in order to get points for important unlocks later down the road. You may battle up to 4 bosses at once, and when they die, monsters will keep respawning until you either die or manually leave the arena. A few power-ups will spawn throughout the fight to aid you in battle, some of which are incredibly powerful to boost points and experience per hour, but more about those later. Now, for a little bit of old-school RuneScape trivia, is that the Nightmare Zone was the very first piece of quote-unquote new content added back when old-school RuneScape was brought back from the dead. The reason why it looks so bizarre is because back then, the only Jagex mods working on old-school RuneScape were Mod Ash and Mod Nexus. With pretty much zero graphical development tools, instead of designing brand new content, all they could do was grabbing existing models, slap them together, and call it new content. As you will hear a lot of people say, this literally looks like something copied from a private server. Oh, and also, if you guys played Dominion Tower back in RuneScape, this was pretty much the inspiration for the Nightmare Zone. With this history lesson out of the way, how exactly do you get here? This minigame is directly north of Yanil's east entrance, and you can get there in many ways. You can use the minigame teleport if you meet the requirements to start the activity, teleport to the Watchtower or even Yanil, teleport to your house in Yanil, and even using a Ring of Dueling to Castle Wars and running east. Anything else will take a little bit longer, and it's honestly a little cringe. So, what are the requirements to start the Nightmare Zone? You will need completion of at least 5 of the quests you see on screen to start battling the bosses. Now, if you literally only have 5 of these quests and you come here to train, you may have a miserable time. So, the ones I have highlighted here are part of much easier quests that can give you decent points and experience per hour, if you don't want to do all of them before getting here. We'll go into detail when it comes to bosses later on. In order to even begin a game of Nightmare Zone, you must deposit some GP in the coffer right next to the entrance. Each run will cost you 26k, or if you're a beast and you have a questscape, each run will cost 16k. We will be using the customizable Rumble Hard setup for maximum efficiency, and if you ask me how different the other options are, well, honestly, I have no idea. Like, literally no one uses them. Now, it's time to talk about something important. What setup should you use? If you know anything about the Nightmare Zone, you have heard people mention Derox, Max Melee, or even Obsidian Armor. In order to go for the highest amount of points, I'll be using Derox, and for the experience per hour gains, I'll be rocking the Max Melee setup and also showing you the comparison with Derox. If you don't have either of these, a full Obsidian with a Berserker Necklace and an Obsidian Sword will work just fine, but just know that this is the order of efficiency. Extremely important to note that you can hit Derox max efficiency at level 92 HP, but if you don't have this level, it's really not the end of the world, and you'll do just fine. Quick thing to note is that training ranged and magic here might not be the best call, as your arrows, bolts and runes, or even trident charges, are spent somewhat pointlessly, since, like I said before, training combat via Slayer is much more efficient. If you want to give it a try, well, who am I to stop you? Before we even prepare for our NMZ adventures, for all of you RuneLight users, <coughs> which is like 95% of the community, there are a few plugins that might be useful. The first one is literally just called the Nightmare Zone, which will notify you of important events and even a few warnings once you are inside. 
NMC Optimal Points will tell you which monsters to focus as they provide the highest amount of points out of the ones you are fighting. And finally, NMZ Utilities will also give you notifications when your HP regenerates above a specific threshold. More often than not, this will always be 1 HP. Alright fellas, it is time to go in, but if this is your very first time doing this activity, we are going to do things slightly differently. Because you have no points and therefore cannot buy any of the essential potions in the Nightmare Zone, grab whatever setup you choose to go with and take 3 Divine Super Combat Potions, or even just Super Combat Potions will do fine, and then fill the rest of your inventory with Prayer Potions. Deposit money in the coffer, talk to Dominic to choose a custom Rumble hard game, and then click on the potion in the middle of the closed off area. For this very first run, we will pick melee only bosses to get our first few points, to then buy our nice potions. Choose the Trapped Soul, Count Draenor, Sand Snake, King Rold, The Candle, Me, Headless Beast, Tree Spirit, and finally the Khazard Warlord. People will say that doing an endurance run is better, but you'll be there for literally just less than 30 minutes, so it's not life or death. Click accept and let the nightmare begin. Once inside, go to the middle of the arena, drink your potions, pray for melee, and activate either piety, chivalry, whatever you have, and let your character attack the bosses with auto-retaliate on for a little bit. Here we are aiming for around 60,000 points, so once you have them, right-click quickly at the potion where you came from, and walk outside to prepare for the real challenge. We are first going to go for points. I am wearing full Derek's armor, a Max Infernal Cape, Amulet of Torture, Rada's Blessing 4, Ferocious Gloves, Primordial Boots, and an imbued Berserker Ring. Now, let's ignore the fact that you need Nightmare Zone points to get this last item, so just imagine it's just a normal Berserker Ring for now. Go to the bank and grab your special attack weapon being Dragon Claws, Din's Bulwark, Granite Maul, Dragon Dagger, you name it. Take a pair of Ice Gloves, a Locator Orb, or a Dwarven Rock Cake, and then take about 9 or 13 Prayer Potions and head north. Right-click the Overload Barrel and then take a maximum of 12 doses. Then, do the same for the Absorption Potion Barrel and fill the rest of your inventory with these potions. I'll explain what they do once you go in. With your gear and inventory ready, put more money in the coffer if you don't have enough for another dream. Talk to Dominic and choose the same dream settings and then go drink the potion again. This time, choose as many bosses as you can except for the following. Corrupt Lizardman, Elbarg, Glod, Chronozon, Barrel Chest, and that's it. Click Accept and your nightmare will begin. Now, I'm going to assume you have access to all of these bosses, so I can take this opportunity to explain how crucial it is to kill each one, or even which monsters to avoid. Here they are in order of importance. Kill Caramel as soon as you can with Protect from Magic on, as it will freeze you and drain your stats. Next we have Camille, and he will only freeze you. If he is on the arena, it will be super annoying, so kill him quickly. Then we have Agrith Nar and Agrith Nana. They will teleport you into melee ranged, and although not awful, it's actually kind of inconvenient. After that, kill Rock and the Dad quickly since they can knock you back and even stun you, costing you precious time. Next, go for the elf called Eslit since he will also stun you and on top of that he will also drain your stats. When you see Farid and Flambeed, equip your Ice Gloves or you won't even be able to attack them. You can only hit the Dagonoth and Gelatinoth Mother when the color changes to orange, so this one is actually time dependent. The monsters you should typically avoid are the following. The Corsair Trader, since he will drain defense stats, and the defense doesn't really matter here. The Witch's Experiment. Tangle Foot, since you actually need the magic secateurs on the floor to damage it. The Slagolith, which has a similar mechanic, but if you don't have a pickaxe, you will deal reduced damage. And the one you should avoid, like the Plague, is Damis, since he will drain your prayer incredibly fast. Now that we're done with the monsters, let me quickly go over how absorption potions work and why you should always take them with you. When you drink a dose of this brew, a counter will show up at the top left of your screen showing how much damage you can absorb before it runs out. If you're full of HP and the monster hits you for, let's say, a 10, instead of reducing your health, your counter will deplete by 10. You can think of this as a shield. Once the counter reaches zero, you will take damage instead. We take a Locator Orb or a Dwarven Rock Cake to take our HP all the way down to 1 after drinking our Overload, because if you're 1 HP, monsters can only land a 1 on you, which would theoretically kill you, but the damage will be negated and you're not gonna need protection prayers. Now that we know how everything works, once inside, drink a dose of Overload, lower your HP, and chug for Absorption Potions. Go to the middle of the arena and prepare for the battle. Once the monsters start spawning, kill them accordingly to what we learned before, going from the crucial ones first and ignoring the ones I told you. And honestly, that's pretty much it. 
When doing this, I keep this little notepad next to my client to remind me what I should do, and you can also do the same. Also, whenever your absorption meter runs uh, a little low, make sure to chug more absorption potions so you don't actually die. Now, what happens if you have four monsters that you should ignore? Well, that's where the power-ups come into play. You will notice a few orbs spawning throughout the nightmare, and here they are in order of relevance. The white orb is called Ultimate Force. When you click on it, all the monsters will be instantly killed, but will not grant any points or experience. This is essential when you have a few low-priority monsters on the field, and you need a refresh for more points and experience. The yellow orb is called Power Surge, and when you touch it, your special attack will be regenerated by 20% every 0.6 seconds, or one game tick, and it lasts for 45 seconds. If you see this on the field, equip your special attack weapon, and spam it like an absolute degenerate to deal even more damage. I had a lot of fun with the Din's Bulwark, but Dragon Claws, Granite Maul, and even the Dragon Dagger will do wonders for both points and experience per hour. The red orb is called Recurrent Damage. Touching it will make you land an additional hit for 75% of what your recent hit was, and this effect lasts for 45 seconds as well. This damage doesn't actually give additional experience, and it's more efficient for points to kill enemies faster, but not so much for experience. Finally, the purple orb is called the Zapper, and it will deal damage to nearby monsters over time for a maximum of 8 per hit. This effect lasts for 1 minute, and it's okay to speed kills up, but I would say this one goes at the bottom of the priority list. Now, with all of this information out of the way, remember to drink a dose of Overload every 5 minutes and keep using your Locator Orb or Dwarven Rock Cake every time your HP goes above 1 to avoid wasting Absorption Potion Protection. Focus the bosses I told you as well as ignoring the low priority ones until the ultimate force appears on the field. Paying attention to all the other power-ups for maximum damage, for your special attacks, and you will be good to go. With this setup, I was able to get slightly above 1 million points in 30 minutes, and if you get close to this amount, you should manually leave, because for some odd reason, the maximum number of points caps at 1,048,000. So I was just about to hit that limit in only 30 minutes, equating to over 2 million points per hour. Now, before anyone flames me for it, I know you can only get this amount of points with max combat stats, max melee gear, with Darok, and of course most bosses, but it only goes to show how crazy it can get. I was getting about 100,000 strength experience per hour and 18,000 attack experience per hour as I was using the Din's Bulwark special. Throw in 38k HP experience per hour, and ladies and gentlemen, that's it for a point run at the Nightmare Zone with full Daroks. Final thing to note here is that after each run you should obviously adapt to whatever you need the most. Mix and match overloads, absorption potions, and even prayer potions according to your previous run. Now the experience per hour approach is going to be way less complicated as we already know all of the basics. So here we go. If you come here for experience, the most chill way to do this is just by AFKing, which is exactly what I did. You can stick to Derox or even switch to your max melee setup, and I will show you the difference after explaining this one. If you want to take your obsidian stuff, that's also perfectly fine. Now, if your plan is to stay here for an indefinite period of time as you can experience while working or doing something else, and you want to stay here for as long as possible, forget your prayer potions and you're gonna take between 6 and 9 full overload potions to last 2 or 3 hours, just in case your other potions run out. Don't forget your Locator Orb or even your Dwarven Rock Cake, and fill the rest of your inventory with Absorption Potions. If you want more experience per hour at the cost of less AFK time, you can take Prayer Potions in order to have Piety or Chivalry active at all times. But this uh, you may need to leave every hour or so. You are going to choose the same monsters I told you for our very first run, being the Trapped Soul, Count Draenor, the Sand Snake, King Rold, the Kendall, me, the Headless Beast, the Tree Spirits, and finally the Khazard Warlord. All of these attack with melee and have no mechanics whatsoever, so this is what I personally use. If you want to add any more, just make sure they don't have any bullshit mechanics uh, and add them to the list to earn slightly more points. Go to the middle of the arena, drink your overload, lower your HP, take your absorption potions, and then turn auto retaliate on and let the game do the work for you. You can stay here for up to 6 hours when the game forces you to log out, but like I said, it would be a good idea to resupply every now and then. I tried this setup with both the Darok and Max Melee, except of course for Torva, because, well, I don't have it, and the results were fairly surprising. By keeping the Darok set with Piety, I was racking in 134,000 strength and 45,000 HP experience per hour. 
I also got myself 185,000 points in 30 minutes, which translates to about 370,000 points per hour, which really isn't that bad. With a maxed melee setup, including a rapier, I got a whopping 139,000 strength and 46,000 HP experience per hour, with 189,000 points in those same 30 minutes. Again, translating to 378,000 points per hour. Alright, so that's everything you need to know about the Nightmare Zone. But how do you spend your points? If you click on the chest north of Dominic, you will notice a few options and I will tell you the best way to spend your points. Assuming you have all of these items, the most efficient use for them is the following, and I will show you all of the points you need for each one of them. A black mask to imbue your Slayer helmet and make it useful for ranged or magic, a Berserker, Archer and Seer's Ring in that order, a Salve Amulet E, and a Ring of Suffering for a grand total of 4,725,000 points. The Wilderness Rings and the Warrior Ring as well as the Granite Ring are not particularly useful, but if you want all of them, you will need an extra 3.1 million points. The Ring of the Gods might be useful for prayer bonus, but honestly there are much better options overall. If you have all of your imbues, you can also buy things like herb boxes, scrolls of redirection, and some other random stuff you can buy with extra points to then sell for profit if you are not an Iron Man. Other than that, we're pretty much done with points. Ladies and gentlemen, that's pretty much it for this video, I really hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something useful. I want to give a massive thank you to all my channel members for joining this amazing project and for pledging a monetary subscription to the channel, you guys are absolute legends and your support doesn't go unnoticed. If you really enjoyed this video and would like to support this channel further, you can click the join button below to see what cool perks and rewards you can get by joining this amazing group of people. In the next one, we will go over the Barbarian Assault minigame to very quickly and easily get yourself a torso and even all your level 5 rolls. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I will see you then. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Peace.